Hello, it's Jeremiah Small from Salon Consulting. This video is about testing and troubleshooting your carafe bundles. The next troubleshooting tip I want to show you is how to enable the web viewer to uh, allow you to access its console. First we'll look at Mac and then we'll look at Windows. The browser console is a developer tool which is very, very useful for when you're trying to get JavaScript functioning properly when you're developing things that are running in JavaScript. By default, it's disabled on the web viewer, but this blog post from Beeswax is a good reference, which so far hasn't been updated to reflect the fact that this 16 and 17 tip will also work on 18. By trial and error, this sometimes doesn't take the first time, but in a nutshell, you just need to copy this command right here and then when you go over to your terminal, you paste that command in. It's gonna update a Boolean value. Before I refresh FileMaker, I wanna right click on the web viewer that's here and show you that the only option uh, available to me is reload. So in order for the WebKit to pick up the change, we're gonna quit out of FileMaker. So let's give this a shot and relaunch FileMaker. Okay, well, it didn't work. Which, true to form, uh, it doesn't sometimes quit. Let's try the same command again, but with sudo. So if I hit up arrow, and then in the terminal, if I do control A, it will jump to the beginning of the line. I can just write sudo space. I have recently authenticated with sudo, so it's not prompting me for a password, but if you run sudo for the first time, it's going to prompt you for your root password. So just go ahead and authenticate, and let's launch FileMaker and see if that worked. I'm coming back to our hello world, and I'll right click. Okay, sure enough, we now have another item in our context menu. What this allows you to do is click on inspect element, which will open up another pane, which is part of the browser Chrome. And it's it looks a bit awkward if you leave it in its default mode. But up here in the upper left hand corner, you can click on detach into separate window. And that puts your FileMaker layout back into a normal mode. And now when you click over to the console, this is typically where errors are going to show up. If I switch over to the version we've been working on and link it to my local again, I'm just gonna go ahead and overwrite the troubleshooting demo we already had uh, output. So that means that what's on the file system is going to get overwritten with whatever's in FileMaker. So we'll choose overwrite. When we flip back over to VS Code, you're gonna to wanna to just close any of the open editors that you have if you overwrote the file just to make sure that you pick up the changes that were just overwritten from FileMaker in that case. But in this case, we had them all closed. So what I want to do is go in here into the onload function, which onload triggers this bold function in our little hello world. And we can add in a console log with a message semicolon to finish our expression, save. Now if we flip back over to FileMaker, reload, we don't see anything different happening, but if we inspect element, switch to the console, we can see that here we are, it got written out to the console. So let me see if, see if this works. By the way, I clicked this preserve log. So if we don't have preserve log on, it may not be immediately obvious what's going on here because it just keeps getting replaced. So switching on preserve log will keep a running log of what you're doing there. So we'll run reload. Here we are. And we'll go back over here, make a little change. So whatever's in the console log or whatever is whatever error output is happening it's going to print to the console. And of course, if JavaScript run, runs into any 
uh, unhandled exceptions like syntax errors or whatever, that will print out here too. Back over on Windows, we have roughly equivalent functionality. Remember, we're hosted. So this instance of Carafe is the same as the other one we were looking at. I'll turn on watching. I guess I'll just go ahead and trigger a change, even though this is a console debug. So it's not going to be obvious when we make our change. Close that. Again, hit save. Flip over to my FileMaker instance in my Mac. Reload this. So there in my Mac debugger, I see here we are again. We can't tell over here though if anything happened because this is uh, something that's happening in the console. On Windows 10 and other versions of Windows, there is a uh, tool called F12 Developer Tools. You can open up C drive, go to Windows, System32, and F12. People call the tool F12 Developer Tools, but the executable is this one here, the IE Chooser. So I have a web viewer open. I'm going to run this. And what it's going to do is see all the instances of IE that are running there and let me pick one. Then it's going to attach a developer console to that. If I go back to FileMaker and I refresh, I'm going to see that here we are again. By the way, when you manually refresh, it kills the watcher. That's on purpose. So if I have the watcher running and I come over here back to my Mac environment, make another console edit. Yep. Go over to my Mac. Reload. Here we are, yup. And here we are, yup. Again, roughly parallel functionality. Sometimes even basic configuration can be frustrating because it's it can seem like a black box. But as soon as you know a path to uh, opening up this little console, sometimes the problems become immediately obvious. They can still be arcane, they can be hard to run down. But many times what seems like a completely intractable problem, it turns out to be in fact something obvious. And if you are trying to debug and it's not something that's immediately obvious, you can always add that console log. Console log is a very, very useful debugging technique where you can add that anywhere that you're expecting JavaScript to execute and you can pass anything to it. As a matter of fact, let's just illustrate that final point. In this function, we have access to this argument here. It would be a, a, a DOM element. So I'll hit save, come back over to my FileMaker, reload. The uh, selector name that's being passed through to the function is message. That's a dynamic element that came through. It's a good idea to, to delete or disable the console when you're done with it uh, because it just adds noise and chatter. Use it with care, but it is a very handy tool, especially in combination with platform-specific debugging tools.